All right. Um, but I don't know where you're watching this video or what circumstance you're in this video. But what I want to do in this video is share you some share some with share with you some of my core values. And when I'm talking about core values, those are going to be your value system that is going to drive the decisions that you make. And one of the more difficult things that we have in our life is when we sometimes need to make a decision. And especially when we don't know what direction to go, how to make the right decision. Our value system is going to help us decide what is going to be the right decision, as well as what is going to be the right way to approach things. And if you don't have a value system, if you don't, if you don't have some essential core values, then feel free to steal or take any of mine, because these are not ones that I always develop, like from listening to other people that have been successful and reading books, I have all kind of collected and made these some of my own. So I have taken as well from each, you know, different people that I've heard from and listened to or read about. And these are some of my value systems that I use, um, or at least have developed throughout my life. And, and now that I kind of follow. And what I want to do is relate these values to you as a math student. So therefore you can see like how these can be beneficial to you um, inside of the classroom or as you are learning math. And again, if you don't agree with any of these value systems, that is okay. You can find your own value system. It's not me trying to tell you what to be, what to be doing, but what I want to do is show you how you can use a value system to help you get better at math. And my value system is one that I use as a struggling math student, as well as a teacher to now kind of, I guess I consider myself a parent of, a, of students that are inside of the classroom. <clears throat> so the first thing, so the first thing as far as my value system is to start your day right. And what I mean by start your day right is really kind of encompasses like planning, preparing, and it's difficult. Oh, and one thing I wanna mention, uh, and it's difficult because not always are your value systems going to be something you always do. I think it's always, I think it's always important. Like people are like, oh, this is like what you do every single time. And it's like, no, nobody's perfect, right? A lot of these are ideals that I'm constantly working through because I will tell you, I never had a planner, never had a planner when I was in high school. Like every single time, like I needed to remember a date or whatever else, I would write it down on like chicken scratch on a piece of, on a piece of paper. Like I never had planners. And even to this day, I, I've invested a lot of money in certain types of planners, like even Google Docs or Google Calendar. Like I just, I can't do it. I, I, for something about my brain that I just hate having the planning, like that organized structure. Like I like it in some regard, but I hate the follow through. So this is definitely something that I work towards. But one thing I do do um, almost every single day is I wake up at 4.30 and I try to start my day really early. I try to plan ahead what I'm going to accomplish for my day, for my week, for my month. And have that, have that as like my vision. Because I think as long as you like have a good, um, good plan of what you are going to be doing, how you're going to be addressing all of your challenges for that week, that day, you know, for that month, then you, um, then you're going to be attacking them with purpose. And that's something very, very important. So I always like to say, start your day right. And that just really comes down to planning. And the way that you can think about this inside the classroom is the exact same thing. Like so many students are like, oh, I'm just going to like jump into my class. Like, you know, every single day, like I'll just show up to class. And no, I don't want you just showing up to class, right? The best students that I ever had were prepared for class each and every day. They knew like, right. I mean, obviously you got to have a teacher that provides like a syllabus and everything else, but it's like, you should prepare yourself every single day for class. Every single day you should be prepared with your homework has been completed. You've looked ahead, like what topic, what information are we going to be addressing? Right. Maybe you've already looked at it. Maybe you already have some pre um, disposed questions that you want to ask, like get yourself prepared for every class. Just don't show up, plop your butt on the seat and be like, all right, let's go and learn some math today. Like, obviously you know how that, you <laughs> you know how that day is going to go, right? It could be some really difficult stuff. You're just not going to be prepared. But if you've already looked at the material, you're like, holy crap, I don't know what's going on. Like, I know I have to be very, very attentive. Or you might look at the material and be like, oh yeah, I remember this actually from, you know, last year. Like, this is the, like review. Like, I'm kind of good on this material. Like, maybe I just need to focus on, you know, certain aspects. But like, get yourself prepared. Get yourself organized. I wish I could be more organized and more prepared um, than what I do. But I will say like, I got by in high school, right? By not being as well organized as I probably should have. But I guarantee you, if I was more prepared um, and organized in high school, I probably would have got better grades than what I did. I always talk about like getting that D in like senior year. 
And I, I wouldn't blame everything on my organizational structure, but I can definitely say if I was more prepared and organized, it definitely would have put me ahead. And it definitely would have done, it definitely would have helped me out. And I will say now as an adult, right? It's very, very important for me to make sure that I am planning each and every day as well as week and month. So therefore I know exactly what I want to approach and what I want to get done. The... The next, the, the next core value is really kind of something like just kind of very basic, but it's something that I, it's really, really important to me. And I don't know why this is one that I've had since my childhood. And I don't know why it's just kind of stuck with me, but it's one that I, I really, really value. And that is just do what you say. It's really easy. It's integrity, right? If you say you're going to do something, then you do it. And I can't even tell you how many times I've said, I've said something and it'd be like, oh crap. Why did I say that? Because once you say it, I'm like, now I have to do it. And I think it's very, very important. Any kind of relationship that you're going to have, um, you know, with anybody that they know when you say something, you are going to follow through. And it's really, really easy to get away from that. It's really, really easy to be like, ah, oh, they're not going to worry. They're not going to remember. They're not going to care. But no, that is part of my value system. And, and I will say that is one thing that I have, I have really stuck to it. I mean, I have done things that I was like, I'm like, you know, I've driven back like hours or like, yeah, I mean, there's just been so many things that it's like, it doesn't even make sense to do it. It's like, oh, they'll understand. But it's like, no, I said I was going to do it. So I am going to do it. Um, and I think that's really important because one, people know that they can trust me. Like if I say I'm going to do something, then guess what? It is going to get done. Like they can trust me. They can rely on me. And I think it's really important. Like as far as like the math classroom, you know, like sometimes we say like, oh, I'm going to do my homework. And then guess what? Your friend gives you a call. Then like, you know, the friend like texts you like the next five minutes later and like, hey, you want to go and hang out? And you're like, oh, all right, let's go and do that. That's much better. Right. Um, or you can say, um, you know, that like, oh, I'm going to like, all right. All right. Miss McLogan inspired me for like every test. I'm going to, you know, whatever I get wrong, I'm going to redo those problems, which is a great idea, by the way. And therefore, then you start doing it maybe like for the first two tests. And then guess what happens? Like test number three, you're like, ah, this is kind of like taking too long. I don't really want to do this anymore. And then you give up. Right. And guess what? Like you kind of create this cycle that just gets over and over. And then you stop following through on things that you said you're going to do. And then sure enough, guess what? Like you end up struggling for the rest of the year because you stopped following through on things you said you're going to do. So it can be things you say to other people that you're going to do or things you say in your brain, but have some integrity, whatever you say, follow through and do. I think it's critically important, um, not just in real life, obviously, but also in the classroom, like figure out what you need to do to be successful in the class, right? Ask your teacher, you know, get your friends like, all right, what do I need to do? Say like, all right, here's my game plan, right? Plan and prepare. Here's my game plan. Here's what I'm going to do and do it. Now doing it comes back to our, our next core value, which is action trumps all. It's great. It's really, it's like really helpful to say you're going to do something like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this. And like, you know, even do it. But the main thing is guys, like you got to do it. You got to take action. And this is, this is something that I think I learned, I'd say the hard way. Um, because I always thought like, you know, learning, oh, learning so important, right? Read, reading books and, and watching videos and, um, you know, you can, learn, you can gain a lot of knowledge and I've spent, you know, quite a bit of money on learning knowledge. And I remember at one time I was at this conference and the guy was all talking about, of course he was selling something, right? So once you knew he was selling something, it kind of, it put up this guard of like, be careful on what he's saying because he's just trying to get you to spend money, which he was. But what he was saying was like, you know, you got to be able to take action. And like the people that are going to be successful are good. Are those are going to be take action. And what was his taking action was going by, was going to the back of the room and buying his system. And, and it was totally completely like true. It was good things he was saying, but obviously he had a intent of making money, right. And you buying his stuff, but it wasn't something like, at first I was like, Oh, this is just like a sales technique. But then what I've starting to really realize is like one, getting to know students that have just like, they'll read the book, you know, they'll show up to class, they'll listen, they'll understand things. Right. But then when it comes down to the test, they fail. They're like, Oh, I, I thought I know everything. Like, why did I fail your test? Like I understood everything that you're talking about in class. And it, and it started to become like perfect clear to me. You weren't putting, you weren't applying any of it. You were understanding it, 
right? But you weren't doing all of it. You weren't practicing enough. You weren't putting yourself into action. And because guys, you can like read the book. Who cares if you read the book? You read the book. Here's the thing that I had to start doing to myself because I thought, oh, if I just read a book, right, then I'm good. Like, hey, I can now say that I read the book, which is true. But now what I had to start doing is like, all right, whenever I read something, I always have to give myself three action steps. What are you going to do now about it? Right. And the same thing. If I like watch a video or something like that, like it's anything encouraging or like something new I'm learning. I'm like, all right, that's great. Like that's learning. Something is cool. Like maybe taking down some notes. You got to have those action steps. How are you going to apply this? What are you going to do about it? Cause I'm telling you, there's so many students that are like, you know, especially with online now they're like, Oh, well, like I'll just watch, you know, I'll watch this tutorial. I'm like, all right, watch the tutorial is one thing you got to practice guys. You got to put in the work. Um, because that is, in my opinion, the difference maker between two people that are, that are, that are able to taste success and those that never get to it is the work. You got to be able to put in the work and you got to be able to put in the effort, right? You can have both two very well educated people, but the person that has applied it and put in the work, that is going to be the person that's going to be more successful than the person that is just passively taking in that information. All right. So just don't think it's good enough to show up to class to take notes, to watch your teacher's lectures. No, put in the work, take action trumps all. <clears throat> and if you're going to have action, right? Action is just like put in your work, right? But here's the other thing. If you want to bump it up a little bit more, you got to have high expectations because this is something, th something that you got to hold yourself accountable accountable for. And I actually didn't get this as one of my core values um, until I started recognizing when I was a captain uh, my senior year. So I was a captain for football, baseball, and wrestling. And I remember when I was captain for those sports, everybody was watching what I was doing. Everybody. If I, slug if I slacked off, the whole team slacked off. If I like pushed myself hard and like went like to the T like, and you know, I don't know, whatever, like was running the hardest or sprint, like everybody would follow suit. And I'm like, crap, everybody just follows what I do. Like I am the bear, like I am what sets the tone for the whole team. And from then on, I knew it's like, you got to set high expectations for yourself. Um, because guess what? When, you know, obviously if you're like, you know, a team, like you're setting high expectations for the team, people are going to follow. And the same thing, if you set high expectations for yourself, guess what? You're immediately going to want to follow from there. And a lot of times like this is, this was kind of difficult, I think as a teacher, because a lot of times we, you know, sometimes what I found is like we, I lowered expectations sometimes. And because a lot of times, you, you know, it was either students weren't passing my class or they were constantly complaining. I was always in like parent conferences and I was like, you know what? All right, fine. I'm going to lower the expectations. Um, I'm not going to push the students as hard. Like, let's just get, you know, let's realize a lot of these students are never going to use this math in their real life. Let's just get them kind of through. And what I found was that didn't fix anything. It really didn't. Yeah. Maybe there, maybe there's a couple like less parent conferences, maybe a couple other students liked me a little bit more, but what I found was like grades were basically about the same. When I lowered the expectations, students just slacked off more. And so what I realized is what I started doing is like, all right, well, let's raise the bar. Let's, you know, let's push these students each and every day. And guess what? Students just, just, just did fine. The ones when I lowered the expectations compared to higher, high in the expectations, they performed exactly the same. The difference was obviously when you push people, when you push your students, they are going to perform much better at a higher level, right? Compared to lowering your expectations. So I think it's really, really important to just don't settle for good enough. You know, push yourself every single time you're in class, like you're deciding like, oh, should I get an A, a B, a C? And it's like, I don't know, like push for you the very best that's going to make you the best version of yourself. Accept high expectations. If you don't get it, that's fine, but keep on reaching for it. And I think that's something that's really, really important for you to uh, be able to do because like when you reach for high expectations, you're going to fail. It's, a, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. And failing sucks. Um, especially if you fail a class, if you fail a course, if you fail a test, if you fail a quiz, like it, it's not something that's very fun, but you learn and you get better each and every time you do that. 
Um, and you know, a lot of times those students will ask me, it was like, Oh, Mr. Mongolian, like, should I take your class or should I go to like, you know, this other class? Cause that teacher is like easy. And like, you know, I'm, I can guarantee to get a good grade. I'm like, you know, what? Hey, I'm not here to tell you what to do because obviously everybody has their own circumstance. Everybody has whatever reason they need to be taking different math classes. I'm fine with that. Like you do you. Right. But I'm like, even if you're not going to be learning, even if you're not going to be taking like math, like I'm going to push you in this class. And, um, if you want to get the benefit of, you know, being like pushed and, you know, making a better version of yourself, then join my class. Like I'll do it. Like I'm, I'm not going to give up on you. I'm not just going to be hard and like watch you fail and laugh at you. Right. I'm going to push you and I'm going to support you. And I want you to be successful in my class and I'm going to help you. It's not going to be easy. Right. This is my class. My class was not a cakewalk. A lot of students did not like my class and they got out of my class quickly. Once they knew they had to put in the work and they knew they had to have high expectations, they're like, oh, don't want that class. Like, I just want something easy. I just want a cakewalk. And hey, you know what? I like, I'm not going to complain, um, you know, about that. Like, I get it. But I think it's really important if you want to be a better, best version of yourself, get high expectations for yourself and push yourself to those ideals. All right. And my last core value, and I think this is one of the most important ones. And this is something I do every single, every single week. I wish I should do it every day. I just don't. But every single week that I do this is, it's just, it's uh, and it's one thing that, you know, if you, um, if you ever listen to Gary Vaynerchuk um, or Gary V, you know, it's one thing he's really adamant about. And I think it's really, really important for you to understand and listen to it is just gratitude. Just be thankful. Anytime that you're having problems in your life, anytime you're having problems with, um, you know, people or issues or circumstances, just be thankful for what you have. Because I think we can all look at our life and we can be like, ah, I want this, or I wish I had this. And, you know, um, all things that we could aspire to, right. Want more and more of, right. But then also look at your life and like, you know, look at where you came from. Look at what you have. Be thankful for that. Give back to others. Um, I think it's extremely important to, you know, give to those that are less fortunate. Give to those that, you know, have helped you get to the point where you're at. I, I think that as far as creating not only a better society, but creating a better version of yourself, being thankful for what you have and being thankful for what you've achieved up to this point and being thankful for those that have helped you get to where you are it's critical. Um, I think that's going to, that's only going to serve you and the people around you more and more. And like I said, guys, these core values that I've talked about in this video is not something that I feel like everybody needs to be able to aspire to. And there's probably some other core values that you can definitely, maybe you've bring, or maybe you've been taught that you aspire to like, and that's fine that I want you to be able to live the best version of your life. I wanted to provide to you some of my core values and relate them to the math classroom. So not only can you apply them to being a better math student, but also for you to be able to be become a better human. And I think that living, uh, living your best life is, you know, something that we should all aspire to and we're never going to reach. So it's something that we just want to work into, you know, every single day. But the this thing about that is having your value system like written down, right? And followed because there's going to be tough times. Every, every person is going to be tested and your value system is what is going to, you know, is going, is what is going to be the driver of you to be able to make those decisions and to hold your footing. So I wish you guys the best of luck. Hopefully this was helpful for you. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next, um, in the next video from over there. So, but hopefully it was helpful and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video, but I'm not giving up now.